our class, let us look at the review question for exam uh, 32. So, let's get started here together. <clears throat> Alright, the first one. Uh, in this diagram that we see, diagonals AC and then BD intersect at E. Then one thing that which we have to realize is that the diagonals in parallelogram, they bisect each other. Uh, that means basically what we are saying is AE must be congruent to EC because it's cut in halves. So then we can write up the equation 3x minus 4 must be equal to x plus 12. Subtracting x from each side, then we get 2x minus 4 is equal to 12. By adding 4, we get 2x must be equal to 16 then you can see that x must be equal to 8. What is the value of x? That's right, we got 8. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, so that was the first one. Let's move on to the second question. So here we have, uh, similarly as before, BE is this portion and ED is the other one and you can see that these are also bisected by uh, the other diagonal which is AC now then we can uh, set up the equation here we get 2 thirds x must be equal to x minus 10 uh, what we can do is we can subtract x from each side then of course on the right side we get negative 10 left then how would you uh, subtract 2 thirds x minus x? Notice that there's a 1 hidden inside. That simply means 2 thirds minus 3 over 3. Because 1 is 3 over 3, having the common denominator. Then you can see that we are left with 1 third. Negative well, 1 third, rather. So here we have negative 1 third x. Then to have x by itself, we're going to divide by negative one third. Then you can see that these two cancels out. We get x equals positive, first of all. Dividing by one third is the same thing as multiplication by three. So we get 30 becomes our answer. And as you can see, they're looking for a value of x. So it would have been choice two. Now let us look at number th <coughs> three here. Uh, we see that angle A is 2x plus 10, angle B is 3x. You see, uh, consecutive angles, meaning angles right next to each other, on the uh, parallelogram are supplementary. That means we can add them up 2x plus 10 plus 3x must be equal to 180. Now, then 2x and 3x can be added up together. We get 5x plus 10 must be equal to 180. Subtracting 10 from each side, 5x must be equal to 170. Then you can, uh, by dividing it by 5, you can easily see that x must be equal to 34. But what I'm looking for is angle B. What does that mean? We gotta multiply 3 times x. So, measure of angle B is 3 times 34 which is equal to 102 degrees so that becomes our answer number four uh, number four is very similar to number three in a way that we just have to add them up to become uh, 180 because they're consecutive angles so here we get 2x plus 12 equal, uh, plus 5x must be equal to 180 so uh, when you add up 2x and uh, 5x, then we get 7x plus 12 equals 180. Subtracting uh, 12 from each side, we get 7x must be equal to 168. And as you can see, when we divide by 7, x must be equal to uh, 24. <clears throat> but what they're looking for is for us to find the angle D. 
but that is same thing as angle B because opposite angles are congruent in a parallelogram. So what we have to do is, yes, we need to uh, figure out the measure of angle D, but that is same as measure of angle B, which is equal to 5 times 24. We can easily see that that's equal to 120 degrees, and that becomes our answer. All right, let's look at number five here together. The measure of two consecutive angles of the parallelogram. So then why don't we try to draw a parallelogram here together first. And we're going to assume that uh, 5 to 4 ratio, that means this can be 5x and this the other one can be 4x. Then since they are <coughs> consecutive, when you add them up, it's equal to uh, 180 degrees. So we get 4x plus 5x equals 180. Then 9x equals 180. Then x must be equal to 20. But 20 is not our answer because we, they're looking for obtuse angle. Obviously, obtuse angle can happen from the bigger one instead of the smaller one. Then here, 5x. Instead of having 5x, we can call it 5 times 20, which will be equal to 100 degrees. And that becomes our answer. Choice 3. Number 6. In a rhombus, that means all sides are equal to each other. A, B, C, D, the measure, uh, uh, the measure in inches of A, B. So I can make something like this, and then I'll say this one is A, B, C, D, and A, B is 3x plus 2, and then B, C is x plus 12. Since it's a rhombus, we can say that they're equal to each other. So 3x plus 2 plus x plus 12 must be, actually, oops. has to be equal to x plus 12. Then subtracting x, then we get 2x plus 2 equals 12 by subtracting 2, and 2x equals 10, where x equals 5. Now, <clears throat> the length that they want is dc, so which it would have been this one, but that is the same thing as any other line segment. So if you have to plug in 5 in place of x, whether it be here or here, we should be getting the same answer. So 5 plus 12, which is equal to 17, and that is the length of this rhombus. Alright, let's look at number 7. Uh, rectangle A, B, C, D. So if I have a rectangle that looks like this, and we see that that can be 1 and 2. A, B, C, D. A, C. That's equal to 3x plus 15, and bottom one, BD becomes 4x minus 5. But as you can see, we need to set them equal to each other here. We get 3x plus 15, which is equal to 4x minus 5. So by adding 5, and you can see that these 5s cancels out, and subtracting 3x Then we get 20 is equal to x. Now, then how am I going to find out what BC is, or AC is? AC is in fact 3 times 20 plus 15. Then 3 times 20 is 60 plus 15. We end up getting 75. 75 will be the length of AC. Number eight. You see, we have a, a, rectang a rectangle and then diagonals. One thing that which we have to realize is that di diagonals are congruent. That makes each portion of the line segment, i.e., all equal. Uh, from the question, we realized that angle one was 42 degrees. But look, what kind of triangle we have here? We end up having an isosceles triangle. So therefore, the, others, uh, the other angle becomes 42. That leaves us the room 
uh, right over here, which is across from angle 2, which will be the same, uh, same in the, uh, this case also. Then we get 180 minus 42 minus 42 must be equal to x. So x equals 96 degrees, which is equal to measure of angle 2 also must be 96 degrees. All right. Let's look at number 9. Uh, so here, angle BAC. There would have been this angle here, and angle ACD. Uh, what is the relationship between those two uh, angles? One thing that which we have to realize, that, uh, realize is that, you know, uh, even in a rectangle, opposite sides are parallel. So this side is parallel to the side. And we have uh, C, um, transverse, so that's same, then we end up creating Z. Hence, these two originally marked angles are alternate interior angles. So we can set them equal to each other. So here we get 3x plus 4 is equal to x plus 28. By subtracting 2, by uh, subtracting x, we get 2x. And by subtracting 4, we get 24. Dividing by 2, x must be equal to 12. Now, since x equals 12, uh, and then what they're looking for is angle CAD. CAD would have been this portion of the angle. To find that blue angle, all we need is that red angle first. How to find that red angle? Oh, that's the angle BAC. By plugging in 12 over there, we can see that measure of angle B. A C is equal to 3 times 12 uh, plus 4, which is equal to 40 degrees. But the blue angle and then 40 degree angles, they're supplementary, so therefore, what angle should be added to 40 to make that into 90? That's right. The answer is choice 4, 50 degree angle. All right, let's look at number 10 here. All parallel, uh, which statement is false? And all parallelograms are quadrilateral? Yes, because parallelograms are more special ones. All rectangles are parallelograms? Yes, that's also true because rectangle is uh, called, also called special uh, parallelogram. All squares are rhombus. Rhombuses, that's also true. But all rectangles are square? Can you have any rectangles to be a square? Why don't I draw one? Is this a square? But it's a rectangle, so there it goes. That violates the... Uh, statement number four. That, therefore, that becomes our answer. All right, let's move on to number 11. Uh, not always true about a parallelogram. Can diagonals be congruent? Oh, yes. That's not always true because uh, that is the property of a rectangle. Number 12. Which quadrilateral must have diagonals that are congruent? Diagonals being congruent, that means either rectangle or trapezoid. And perpendicular, that means that's a rhombus. Then which figure is a rhombus at the same time? A rectangle, possibly? Only thing that's possible is a square. So choice 12 becomes, I mean, our choice 2 becomes our answer for number 12. Number 13. A quadrilateral those uh, whose diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals bisect each other, that means it's a parallelogram. And perpendicular. That means perpendicular diagonals, we're talking about the rhombus. Number 14. In a certain quadrilateral, two opposite sides are parallel. And the other two opposite sides are not congruent. Two sides are parallel, that means... It has to be uh, trapezoid, but the other two sides cannot be congruent, so it ha still has to be trapezoid, because you can see that here, two sides are parallel, but the other two sides are not congruent. Number 15. You see that we have an isosceles trapezoid. That means one of the first things that you might want to do is draw this line. And notice that in the middle, the same thing as the top, which is 12. Then what is the difference between 28 and then 12? 
When you subtract them, then you'll end up getting 16, which has to cover this side and also this side. Then each one would have been equal to 8. But what they're looking for is side AB. So let, let me call that as x. You can easily see that through the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared is equal to 8 squared plus 9 squared, which is equal to 64 plus 81. Then when you combine them together, we get 145. So x must be equal to square root of 145, which is about 12. So 12 becomes our answer. Right, we're going to stop here for now for the part one, and we're going to start part two very soon.